Have you ever seen pictures like this, where you ask yourself, what is this beautiful girl doing? What is she doing with this hard drive? Why is it on a glass table? Why is she holding the soldering iron like that? So, what? Or this one, even a worse uh, example. I mean, that hurts. Uh, I mean, it hurts me when I look at the picture. I mean, you see what's going on here? Can you see it now? She's holding the hot end of the soldering iron. And you can clearly see the hot end because it is brown and dark. Yeah, okay. For a photograph like this, it needs two people. One that holds the soldering iron and number two the one that holds the camera. And if neither of the two has an idea about electronics or tools, that's the result. But the real reason for making this video is this series here that runs on Netflix and it is called Scorpion. And yeah, you absolutely have to watch the pilot movie. It's horrible from a technical standpoint. And I will explain you why. But before I start with Scorpion, I want to jump to Blacklist, Season 8, Episode 7, Chemical Mary. And it seems that these movie makers have especially trouble when it comes to airplanes and technology. Uh, you will see that later in Scorpion too. Um, on this picture here you clearly see a Boeing 747 jumbo jet with four engines. And this is an original Boeing 747 jumbo jet cockpit. And you clearly see the four white levers in the center console for the four engines. That's how it looks in reality. And this is how the cockpit looks in the movie. You can see they only have two throttle levers and a really fancy display right behind those levers I have never seen in an airplane before. And it looks a little bit as this is one of these home-built simulators they used. Maybe. But it gets even better. That's the bad guy doing bad stuff in the cockpit with an USB stick. And look closely, it blinks. Wow. Let's freeze that for a moment. What is this in this cabinet here? On the top you see an HP server, a DL360 Generation 5. It's quite an old server. And it has no power because there is not a single light on. And it's not on standby because the yellow light uh, in the power button would turn on when power is applied to the server. So I wonder how this USB stick can flash its LED without any power. And by the way, uh, DL360 Generation 5 is about 60 centimeters deep. So uh, when you look at this, it's mounted on the cockpit wall. So half of the server would be outside in the free air. That's perfect cooling, but I doubt it would work for very long. This is my DL360 Generation 5 in my workshop. And when power is on, you see the power button is orange. And when you press the button, you can hear this noise. And that's probably, or most likely, the reason why they didn't power it up for the movie, for the filming, because that would destroy the entire scene, of course. This is a short clip from the same episode. Look at the tool she holds in her hand. It's not a technical problem this time, it's more a funny fact. A funny fact, because I have the same tool in my workshop. 
but this tool doesn't contain any deadly chemicals. It contains oil, because it's an oil saver. It works like this. You press the button, one drop of oil comes out at the bottom there, and that's it. I wouldn't recommend that tool to hold deadly poisons, because it's not that airtight. So let's go back to Scorpion, our main feature movie today. Uh, I picked some really great scenes, great in terms of they are awful from a technical standpoint. If you are a technical person, you will laugh ab about that and, well, let's have a look. The whole story starts quite nice. There is a psychologist, a computer nerd, an electrician, a mathematician, everyone a genius in his own uh, job and they are hired by the government. And the gover government wants them to solve problems like uh, airplanes that can't land because the software is broken or well, stuff like that, you know, all the problems government has can be solved by nerds. The whole plot is about like that. A terrorist delete tower software from an airport and therefore no airplane can land there and everywhere else. And they need to restore that software as soon as possible because airplanes will crash down when they run out of fuel. Solving the problem is simple. They run out to a warehouse outside the town, hack the door and try to find the hard drive with the backup, because that's the only way how that data can be accessed. So they finally found the hard drive, rushed it in a car to the restaurant where the computer nerd is waiting. He waits in a restaurant, of course, just to find out that the hard drive was wiped because they transported it too close to the speaker magnets in the door of the car. And that's the only scene that's halfway realistic. Did you notice that he uses FTP protocol? to transfer data from a hard drive to a computer? Hmm... So that means the software is gone, the backup is deleted, but there is still hope, because every airplane has a copy of that software on board. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but Hollywood knows it. So solving the problem is very easy. You only have to get the software from the airplane to the tower. And that can be done by the airplane onboard Wi-Fi system while the airplane is shooting uh, across the tower and it doesn't work. And that's the second realistic scene here. So let's take a short break to think. There is an airplane low passing the airport and why is that airplane not landing right now? I mean, why? Why? Because they have to do another stunt with a Ferrari. Well, they reach down, get some long Ethernet cables from the airplane, which is conveniently close to that hatch. Uh, they climb down the uh, landing gear, while the airplane is still flying, that's an easy task, there is no ladder or nothing, and they reach down the cable to plug it into the laptop computer in the Ferrari, which drives along the uh, uh, runway with super speed. And they manage to get the data, and uh, the guy gets his certificate, and everyone is happy, except me. 
So let's go back to my remarks at the beginning of this video. I said for a product shot there are only two people, the model and the photographer, and if they have no idea what they're doing, that's the result. But in a movie production like this, there are, I don't know, dozens, tens, hundreds of people and nobody tells them, hey, stop, that's not possible. I mean, I don't know who wrote the script for that uh, series, but that guy definitely, definitely has no idea about airplanes, computers, how stuff works, how stuff doesn't work. Yeah. So my recommendation for this series, if you want to have fun about all these details, watch it. But I really don't recommend it. Okay, thanks for watching.